the activities for the crew going smoothly. And although it sounds like a, a quiet day from the perspective here on Earth, it's a busy day for the crew. And joining us to kind of tell us a little bit more about what it's like from the crew perspective is astronaut Katie Coleman. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Nicole. Hi. It seems like you were just up there, and yet I'm <laughs> looking at the dates, and it's it's been about two years since you were on the International Space Station. It's true, but I tell you, you know, watching the guys on orbit right now, I mean, just in the job that I do here with the office, I try to keep tabs on what they're doing. And, you know, it just makes me feel like I'm on board there with them. I bet. And we have more ways than ever to follow along with the crew, so I'm sure it's it's particularly uh, special for you. What it, why don't you tell us, since Chris especially is really new on orbit, and we've noticed that they have familiarization time blocked out each day, as a new crew member on the space station, can you kind of tell us what do you use that time for? Well, there's just all sorts of things you only have to kind of find once or do once. Um, it's just things like when we exercise, we use a data card that is going to you know, keep track of all the exercise that we do, and you have to go unstow a new card and format it and stick it in the machine and, you know, and download your protocol so that you know what to do. I mean, there's some things like that. There's, um, they spend a good deal of the beginning time just um, getting all their stuff. I mean, we packed that stuff probably, I don't know, close to a year before we left maybe a year and a half, somebody asked me, okay, so how many shirts, how many pants? <laughs> and so just kind of going through your stuff and figuring out what's there and how to organize it, there's that, some of that kind of time. But also um, during most of that time, somebody else on the station is already there, like Chris Hadfield or Tom Marshburn is taking Chris around and saying, hey, okay, so I'm working on this today, and when we do this, this is the tricky part right here. You know, it's all those things that, like if it's, you know, Christmas Eve and you're trying to put complicated Christmas presents together, I mean, if there was somebody there right next to you that showed you, oh, this is the tricky part and this has to go under that and you have to put this together first, that's all actually written in the instructions if you read them, which we do, but it's easier if somebody shows you. So a lot of that is kind of show-me time. Right. I'm sure it's invaluable for a new crew member up on uh, the space station. Absolutely. You know, we actually had somebody going up who wasn't going to have much time with the, the prior crew. There was a short handover, and we developed a cool technique um, of using videos down here on the ground. Uh, folks, including myself, made short little videos as if we were up there and showing Dan Burbank around the space station. Okay, Dan, when you do this, this is the tricky part. And so that we, we've try, tried to find some creative ways to do that even before we go and save some of that on-orbit time. Right. Well, we noticed that Chris today has some really fun crew quarters cleaning tasks uh, planned for his afternoon, <laughs> some detailed vacuuming. And I noticed that he has to even gather a mask and goggles for that task. That kind of just illustrates how even the simplest tasks on, in space are really different from what we might think here on Earth. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about what that really involves? Well, when we think about everything floating around, that means literally everything is going to float around. And the only way that things get someplace is usually with the air circulation system. So we've got literally air conditioning, heating, and, it, and it's air that's going to flow you know, in one place and out another. And often when it's flowing into the system, there's a screen there to keep you know, anything that's been floating around the cabin um, from going through there as well. And there are certain places around the space station that we understand – given the airflow that that is where we're going to find the things that we lost, even when we don't need, know that we lost them. It's your flashlight and your pencil, pencil or your clipboard, or in my case, I actually did misplace my flute one time up there <laughs> and found it on one of those vents. Well, in the crew quarters, we have a number of different vents that make sure that the air that we're breathing in the, in the crew quarters is really clean, and they have really fine filters on them. And once every long while, we actually take that whole crew quarters apart and vacuum those those uh, um, uh, places where the the lint and the dust and even just it sounds terrible but you know dead skin and just the little pieces of stuff those are all collected and they're not going into the crew quarters. Well, Chris is going to take that thing apart and vacuum all that dust up. And vacuuming is really the only way to to clean things up that are small and particulate. It's amazing. It's, you know, just these human factor types of things that we don't think about here on Earth that, that really are important up there. It's true. You know, we spent a lot of time just talking about what are the best kinds of vacuum cleaner adapters because there there is a lot of dust and dirt that um, maybe ends up on the vents but also can sort of cling just to the walls and to uh, pieces of equipment through static electricity. And the only way to get them off is to have the vacuum kind of directly interface with them. So we talk a lot about what attachments we want to have on, on hand up there to be really effective at cleaning. Well, I know 
cleaning and keeping the surfaces all very clean is an, uh, an important priority. In fact, on the weekends, you guys have time designated for housekeeping. Can you tell us a little bit about what that involves? Is it the same every week, and is it pretty a, a pretty routine, similar to what we would be doing here at home on the weekends? It is very much like doing chores, and we divide the space station up kind of geographically usually, and that way you know you know your jobs and you can do them each week. Um, a lot of it does involve vacuuming, where we're going to go to the vents where we know stuff collects all the time and clean those off so that the airflow isn't clogged. And then we're also going to go to some vents that, you know, they don't get clogged as much because they're further into the system, and chances are they're harder to get to. We have to maybe unscrew a panel and go back there and find it and get to the vent. And, you know, we might do some every month. We might do some. Um, there's a lot that we do every single week. Um, and even just kind of just cleaning up around there, finding stuff that maybe I'm doing an experiment and I – you know, sit something, you know, Velcro something to the wall next to that experiment that I needed, maybe even just a timer or something like that. This once a week time is, is time to go, oh, wait a minute, that should actually be with all the timers. So it's a way just to get the space station um, in order. And it's kind of, it's really actually kind of fun to, because we get to fly everywhere up there. I used to have the Japanese module as my place that I cleaned. And, you know, it's, you've got like the, the vacuum cleaner, you're just kind of holding on to that. And, you know, often actually right between your legs is the, between your feet is the easiest place to keep that vacuum cleaner. And I'm just flying along using one hand to guide myself and sort of, you know, skim along the, the, the module. And I'm using the other hand to vacuum. So if I got to fly around the house vacuuming, I think um, I would do it a lot more often. I was just going to say, it sounds like chores in space are a lot more fun than they are here on Earth. <laughs> they really can. I'll tell you the things that are kind of a pain are when everything is floating around. Maybe maybe your job is, let's say they uh, ask you to count you know, how many batteries are in this bag. Well, they're all floating around, and chances are it's kind of hard to do. And we discovered that early on, and now we package batteries in bags so that we're just counting groups of bags. But things that are hard to keep track of and that when you try to open it up and see what's in there, everything's kind of, you know, floating around, that kind of stuff can be kind of frustrating, but otherwise cleaning is pretty fun. The other thing that I noticed in the procedures that I thought was really interesting is that he can only spend a certain amount of time in those quarters or in his particular area because of the ventilation. Well, we have rules about ven the ventilation that we've measured. I mean, because um, we don't have convection up there, so think of a hot, hot air balloon where the lighter gases are going to rise. You know, that, and that's, that leads to mixing, you know, here in our atmosphere, and that's what weather is really all about is hot air and cold air, you know, getting recirculated and moisture as well. Um, we don't have that kind of movement in the space station, and so in a place where there isn't a lot of airflow, we could actually, by being there and breathing for a while, populate that area with CO2. And so then we're not breathing enough oxygen. So that's why in some places that we know there's not very good airflow, we have time limits for what, well, the time we can spend there. It's really, really interesting. So I'm sure all this is bringing back a lot of memories for you. What are you missing the most now that you're here on Earth but following along and seeing some of your friends and counterparts up there? Is there a part that really speaks to you that you really miss? Well, I, I loved just living up there. I mean, I loved the fact that it was like being a colonist, like being somebody you know, to be the first person to live on another planet where all the rules are different, and that's so clear every single day because of the, we say the floating around, but really it's flying. You know, when I want to go from one end of the lab to the other, I'm going to give myself a little push, and off I go until I meet another surface. And you get better and better at that. And that's actually another thing that probably Chris uh, Cassidy is getting better at is it's kind of fun when we first get on board. We're not so good at that flying around, and we tend to sort of grab from place to place, hand by hand, as if you were climbing up a ladder or something. And after we get better at it, we're just using a finger or two to redirect ourselves and fly off in another direction on the space station. And that also means that we probably knock less stuff off the walls <laughs> and are less clumsy after a little while. And it's uh, as a new person, you're just trying to get better at uh, moving around. But I, I did just love uh, living up there and just waking up in the morning and flying, you know, down to the node three, um, you know, brushing my teeth, going to the bathroom, all those things, and and reporting for our conference every morning. And then just starting the work of the day. And, and I miss making some of that work happen because I think it's really important work that we do up there. 
Wow. Well, we know it's... Uh it's, it's nice when you can't be there, at least you have close friends doing it. And uh, speaking of supporting them, you've moved on to a, a different job now within the astronaut office. You're still in the Corps. What, what is your job nowadays now that you've kind of completed your post-flight and the debriefs? Well, we're all in line, you know, wishing to, to fly again, but that line is pretty long. And in the meantime, it's really our, my job to help make sure that other crew members are ready, and specifically for these visiting vehicles, these new commer uh, commercial, made by our commercial partners, supply ships that come up and get grabbed by the robotic arm. I was the f second person to do that on orbit, and it's a pretty exciting event when uh, you've got, you know, the space station going at 17,500 miles an hour, and then right alongside it, you know, driving on the same highway, is this supply ship, and you are going to use the controls of the robotic arm to reach out and capture that thing, and hopefully not sort of tip it, you know, or, or hit it such that it's going to go away from the space station or even worse towards the space station. So it's a pretty critical operation, and then just attaching that to the space station, unloading the supplies, packing trash or things that need to come back uh, to Earth, uh, back into that ship. So I've done that operation on orbit, and now I get to kind of be the, the mother of uh, supply ships and make sure that the, the ground understands what the crew might be doing up there and that the crew understands, you know, how all that works and when they say something, what that really means on the ground. It's pretty fun. Absolutely. I think it's invaluable that, you know, for them to have your perspective in that role, and we certainly hope you get to fly again. But uh, we know you're really busy and really appreciate you taking the time to kind of share with us a little bit of the perspective of what the crew's experiencing now. Uh, hey, it's no problem. Let me just tell you real quick, Nicole, that the, actually the newest supply ship, that's one that I'm in charge of, is called Cygnus. It's by the Orbital Sciences Company, and that has its first test launch, not coming to the space station, but just a test launch next week, which is really exciting. And it should be coming to the space station just a few months after that. So we're pretty busy down here getting ready for that, but it's, pretty, it's a pretty exciting time with these new commercial partners. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Hey, thank you, Nicole. It's nice to talk to you. Take care. Uh, you too. Okay. And a reminder, you can follow Katie on Twitter at Astro underscore Katie. And, uh, of course, explore more about the life on the International Space Station on our website at www.nasa.gov slash station, where you can find the timelines, you can listen to the real-time audio and see video, lots of resources there for you to learn more about what it's like in a day in the life for the astronauts.